He's been the surprise of the 2026 World Darts Championship. Instantly loved by the crowd for his funny attitude on stage, his reactions to the camera, and his very solid level of play. We're talking, of course, about Happy Feet Justin Hood. Let's discover the secrets of Justin Hood throw. Justin sets up almost perfectly in the center of the throwing line. His stance is primarily a closed stance, with the lead foot positioned parallel to the throwing line. In some images and match footage, you can occasionally see him leaning slightly toward a forward stance, but overall his setup remains as a closed stance. This type of stance is not uncommon at the top level. In fact, it's a setup also used by elite players such as Luke Littler and Michael Van Gerwen, which already tells us a lot about how effective and stable this position can be when executed correctly. Now, if we imagine drawing an imaginary line from Justin's dominant eye straight down to his heel, something interesting becomes visible. Along this line, we can observe that the elbow is not perfectly aligned, but instead sits slightly outside the line, meaning it's a bit open rather than completely stacked. Now, let's move on to the stance itself. Overall, Hood's stance is very solid and well-structured. His elbow position is fairly high and stable, and it sits almost perfectly in line with the shoulders, which is an indicator of good upper body stability. The throwing motion itself is quite simple and efficient. You can clearly identify the three main phases of the throw, the set, the pullback, and the release. These phases are distinct and well separated, which is something we'll analyze in more detail later on. In terms of balance, his weight distribution is very well managed. Most of the weight is correctly placed on the supporting leg, while the toe of the back foot remains in contact with the floor, acting as a stabilizer. This setup provides good balance and control. If we take a look at this second camera angle, this becomes even more evident. You can clearly see how the body remains completely still during the throwing phase, with the exception of the throwing arm. There's no excessive sway, no rotation of the torso, and no visible loss of balance. From this angle, we can also appreciate a clean release and an overall motion that looks clean and controlled. Now let's move on to the grip, which is always one of the most interesting and personal aspects of a player's throw. We're looking at a four-finger grip, the index finger and thumb act as the main grip, controlling the dart primarily near the back end of the barrel, almost on the stem. The middle finger sits more centrally on the barrel and functions mainly as a stabilizer. Then we have the ring finger, which supports the dart underneath with the tip resting on it. This grip actually reminds me quite a lot of Krzysztof Artajski's grip, especially in terms of finger distribution. One particularly interesting detail appears during the pullback phase. As Justin draws the dart back, the finger underneath the tip is slightly lifted meaning that just before the release, the grip effectively transitions from four fingers to three. This is a very subtle but fascinating movement. Now, let's talk about grouping. Hood is a solid 180 hitter, and this is mainly due to his good ability to replicate the same throwing motion. Once he lands the first dart in the treble, he's good at staying in rhythm and following it up with the next two darts, maintaining the same flow. Another important factor is the entry angle of the dart. Justin's darts tend to enter the board with the tail up. It helps limit deflections and creates a kind of natural ramp, so when the next dart is thrown into the previous one, it's more likely to slide in and stick within the same segment, rather than being pushed out. This is exactly what we can see in the image on screen. The first dart creates the ideal reference point, and the following darts are almost guided into the treble by the angle and positioning of the dart, already in the board. Let's move on to the front camera analysis. The first thing to look at here is eye dominance. I've marked the left eye on screen with a small circle, but when we observe the throwing motion from the front, the hand path stays quite centered during the throw. Because of this, it's actually possible that Justin might be right eye dominant. This kind of centered alignment can sometimes make eye dominance harder to read. As we mentioned earlier, the elbow is slightly open relative to the ideal eye to target line. However, the important thing here is not just the position itself, but the consistency of that position. The elbow does not continue to open or drift outward during the throwing action. It stays remarkably stable throughout the entire motion, which is a strong sign of solid mechanics. If we look at the elbow tracking, highlighted by the green dots, we can see that the elbow lifts slightly during the pullback phase. That movement is present, but it's very subtle and not particularly significant. The last detail worth mentioning is the open grip orientation. 
We can clearly see that the wrist is facing the target, which naturally leads to a wrist flexion during the release. Quick pause here. If you love darts and stats, head over to Dartslytics. You can check out the full statistical rankings, pick any year you want, explore detailed player profiles, and even compare players side by side. If you want to dive in, the link is also in the description. Let's move on to the throwing action. One of the first things we can notice is that Justin Hood's first dart is clearly different from the other two. The first dart is carefully set with a more deliberate and controlled preparation, while the second and third darts are thrown much more on flow, almost automatically, without the same level of conscious setup. We've already seen this type of approach in other professional players such as Bo Greaves and Damon Hedda. In fact, if you pay close attention, you'll notice that they do exactly the same thing. A more structured first dart, followed by two rhythm-based throws that rely heavily on timing and muscle memory. In some moments during the match, he actually resets the entire motion for every single dart. I think this depends a lot on how he feels on stage in that specific moment. Most of the time he throws on flow, but occasionally he chooses to slow things down and take a more deliberate approach. We can break down the mechanics more precisely. Justin sets the dart at roughly 108 degrees, then executes the pullback down to about 70 degrees, before finishing with a full extension of the arm during the release. It's interesting to observe how the arm lifts during the release phase. Let's take another close look at Justin Hood's technique. Does it remind you of anyone? If I mention another left-handed player, what comes to mind? For me, Hood's throwing style is really similar to James Wade, and it's not just because they're both left-handed. The way the dart is positioned, moving from vertical to horizontal as he sets it and rotates it into place, is almost identical. Whether Justin took inspiration from Wade or it's purely a coincidence, one thing's for sure the result is excellent. Speed is not an element that affects the level of a darts player. However, I usually like to include it in the analysis because it is an element that adds awesomeness in a match. Justin takes about 5 seconds to release the darts. Let's say that most players take between 5 and 5.5 seconds, so his time is an average time closer to fast than slow. These are Justin Hood's statistics for 2025, his first year on the tour card. As you can see, there's nothing particularly outstanding on paper. He sits roughly around the middle of the statistical rankings with an average of about 91. What really stands out though is the checkout percentage, especially if we think back to his world championship match against Josh Rock. That performance puts these numbers into perspective and tells us, once again, just how much darts is a mental game. At this level, any player who holds a tour card has the technical ability to win matches. The difference is often not mechanical or technical, but mental. Confidence, belief, momentum, these factors can completely change a player's performance. Sometimes it only takes a small spark to find the right mindset and unlock your potential. At the same time, it takes very little to slip into a negative spiral, where doubt starts to creep in and performances suffer as a result. Now the big question is whether that World Championship breakthrough will give Justin the momentum he needs. We'll have to see if that run on the big stage can act as a catalyst and push him forward into a strong second year on the tour card. Thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a comment below and tell me which analysis you want to see next. And if you've got a bit more time, check out these two videos. They might just be your next favorite.